Very nice. Hey everyone, welcome to that pedal show. Dan here. Mick here, that was loud. It was very loud, but very nice. Before we go any further and talk about clons and not clons. And not a not a clon. Yes, probably too late for that, but <laughs> go to that pedal show store, buy some merch. It's how we fund this show. And we're gratefully appreciative of all of your buyings. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Been a long morning. Been a long morning. Uh, also, please subscribe. Hit the button. Subscribe to the show. It does make a difference. And uh, yeah, please, please, please do that. Yeah. Right. Here we go. Last night, Dan said, "Want to do a show tomorrow?" It was called "Not a Notaclon." <laughs> and I said, "I don't care what's in the show. It's just a hard yes for me." I'm in. <laughs> uh, why are we doing this? A couple of weeks ago, even if it was that long ago, we were witness to the best marketing campaign we have ever seen. Pedal marketing campaign. Pedal marketing campaign. I'm going to say ever, really? like in any in any category, okay. in, like. It was genius. It was it was pretty spectacularly good. Congratulations to Josh and the team at JHS yep. for the Notaclon launch. It was uh, a piece of proper marketing genius. Yeah, we haven't got ours yet, but no. we're I'm sure we're one of the twenty five thousand <laughs> that have been sold. So, so regular viewers will know if you want to see a clon, one of the places you can come uh, quite regularly to do so is that pedal show because I have an original '90s silver clon and I love it dearly. It's one of my favourite overdrive pedals. Outside of all the hype, I paid next to nothing for mine back in the day. Uh, so all that crap about them being too expensive and all of that, we're just going to park that. But this might be the last clon show we ever do. Yeah, because we've done it. There's nothing more to be said. We've said it. Yep. It's been hyped. Yes. The point being, Josh has deconstructed his clon and called it not a clon and given it to you in kit form. Dan thought he would do a version of the same thing. <laughs> yeah. So what you see on the board is... We've got... I'll take you through what's on the board and I'll tell you what it's doing. We've got a splitter at the front, splitting the signal three ways. Hang on, rewind. Why are we doing this? What you Explain the clon circuit briefly. Okay, very briefly. The clon circuit is a demonstration of, I would say, electronics genius. Because it's not about, you know, they talk about mythical diodes, but the actual design of it itself is brilliant. What the clon circuit does is it splits the signal. Your, your guitar goes in, and then the signal split. It's actually split three ways. And then it goes through some filtering, it goes through some distortion circuits, and then another clean circuit it all gets mixed together at the end. And then depending on where the gain control is set, is uh, mixes sort of the distortion circuit in with the clean circuit. And then you've got your EQ and then a, a passive volume control at the end. There'll be in a sort of an abridged diagram of that. It's not a complete circuit diagram. It's just a representation of what's happening on the top level. Thank you to the Basement 70 for crackling away there. There's a reason for that, which we'll come to in a minute. Yeah. So what I thought would be fun is to deconstruct all the elements that make the clon the clon. Now, it's difficult to do for a number of reasons, so I'm going to put a Dan disclaimer yeah, here. A Dan disclaimer. A Dan disclaimer. That, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, obviously the clon circuit is an all-in-one thing and everything's been tweaked to, you know, perfection. What we're doing here is just to show you what each of the elements do in the clon so, you know, I think we'll get close. I don't think we'll nail it, but I think we'll get pretty close. Close enough for you to understand what those elements What's are doing. What's going on? Yeah, Dan did this before with a multi-head delay and also with something else. You took something else apart uh, and we deconstructed it. Can't remember. Yeah. Anyway, definitely the multi-head delay. Watch that one. Yeah. Hades, what, do you remember the other one? Reverb. The reverb. Uh, yes, yeah. so all the little delays. There we go. Thank you, Hades. Yeah, so I thought this would be fun. Okay, um, before, we start, before we start getting into it, uh, we're going to do two things. One is explain the amplifier choice today. So the reason that Bill Finnegan and the, the team that ended up designing the clon, and, but Bill, it was Bill's kind of impetus, if you like. The reason he did it is because he found himself playing Fender amps, twins perhaps, uh, in his favorite bars and clubs, and it was just too loud. He couldn't crank them. He didn't get the distortion he wanted because he had to play quietly. So the clon came about 
as a, a way in which to replicate that kind of sound working with the amp to get that kind of pushed fender distortion yeah. sound. Yeah. We don't have a twin. The closest thing we've got is this late 70s Baseman 70, mm -hmm. which is clean, 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 clean. So clean. Uh, I wonder what the settings are. We've got a reverb hooked up to it as well, so it's a bit more twinny. And we've decided to run it through some high efficiency speakers. So we're sort of taking Bill's problem to the nth degree. Yes, we are. This is loud and clean and sterile and not massively enjoyable without some love. Yeah, I don't know if it's sterile, but it's got that, it definitely has that thing. It's like the transients are brutal. Yeah, you ain't gonna be playing any rock on no, it oh, no, anytime no, no. soon. No. So that's why we've chosen that amplifier. Uh, and as we say, there is a crazy tube circuits white whale there to give us reverb. Actually, well, have a listen to it. Actually, it sounds really nice. It sounds lovely. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's why we're using the amp. Let us take a one minute, less than one minute trip through the sounds of the Clon Centaur okay. into this thing. Yeah. Uh, I'll play a bit, Dan will play a bit, and then I'll grab another guitar and we'll play a bit more. Okay. And hopefully we'll go from the full range of what the Clon does. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. There's, th well, there's three main things I think the Clon is known for. The beautiful clean boost, the mid game thing, and the out and out El Rocco. Let's do that then. So my standard settings for Klon would be something like this. When I'm using it with a Strat, I'll just do you an on-off comparison. That is so beautiful. Lovely clean boost. So beautiful. Dan, if you want to give us some uh, buckers of hum. people who say, why on earth would you use it for a clean boost when it does a lovely overdrive like that? Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. Whatever you like. Indeed. However you like to use it. Uh, right. So I think let's try for those three. All right. Okay. So I'm going to spend a lot of time on my knees in this episode. <laughs> all right. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll help, Dan. I'll help. I appreciate that. Yeah. So let's have a look at... Uh, 
Okay, actually, first of all, let's understand what the the clon is doing. There are three distinct signal paths in the clon. There's the gain circuit, which does all your distortion, and there's a clean circuit. Now, the, the gain circuit has a part of a clean circuit, it's got a um, like a hundred hertz uh, low pass filter at the start. When we were talking about this in a car earlier, I was like, are you sure it's not a high pass filter? Normally on an input of a pedal, you'd have a, a high pass filter, i.e. Yeah. it would get rid of low end. It yeah. wouldn't allow low end to pass, right? It only allows high end to pass. Dan's like, no, 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 it's a low pass filter. It's a low pass filter, but the low pass filter is clean. Right. The reason for this, if you, if you, amplify, if you distort all of the bass frequencies, you get into fuzz territory. So what they've done here in the overdrive circuit is they've allowed clean part of the low pass filter through mixing into the gain circuit, right? So you get um, these, the, like the weight of it, but without that weight turning into fuzz. Fantastic. Right? So uh, let's start. Let's start with the clean. Start with the clean. So, so doing the clean, tell me about the pedals that are doing the clean and the overdrive parts of the circuit that okay. you've chosen. So the guitar is going into this uh, splitter. Judy so, in people's front. The, the Judy in people's front. When, it's a Monty Python gag. Don't get weird about it. When uh, we did uh, the first Frankenstein board, um, I contacted uh, Lazy Bear effects who were in the UK and I said, you know, can you just build me a, a four-way splitter and, and a bunch of different things and they did a passive bone controller. So the, yes. One in, four out. One in, four out. But in this case, we're only using three. In this case, exactly that. We're yep. only using three. Yep. So the first part goes into this 10 band EQ and then straight into the a side of the mixer. So, so the A side on the wetter box is just the 10 band EQ. Yep. Right? If we go all over to the B side, what we get, there are two signals split. One goes into the GE7 yep. with everything down except for 100. Hertz. So that's our low pass that's filter. That's our low pass filter. So it's only letting stuff that's below 100 hertz through. Yeah, it's 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 not a it doesn't completely shelve them. No. But it it reduces them. So the idea behind that it is like none of the harmonics are basically getting through. You've got um, the main, you know, your 100 hertz, which is at unity. Yeah. And then we're reducing drastically all, all those frequencies. Okay. Right. Yep. 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 And then the other side goes into, we've got the Ross distortion. Now, why did we choose that? Um, two reasons in homage to, to Josh. Uh, this is his uh, his new, um, they, JHS now own Ross and they re-released uh, the Ross pedals. It's got germanium diodes, which is very important, but most important, it's a hard clipper, which the circuit in the clon is. So what that means is you've got a pair of clipping diodes, right? Which are basically back to back. And as the signal goes up, up and down, the clipping diodes clamp that signal, giving you the edge, which is your overdrive. Now, in a soft clipping device, those diodes are generally in the uh, feedback loop of your op amp. Mm -hmm. In a hard clipper, the diodes are right at the end, yeah, so afterwards. everything goes through them. Yeah. So the op amp, the IC, creates the gain increase, and the clipping diodes turn it into distortion. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And that's happening inside the clon. Exactly. On that. one of its lines. On one of its lines, it goes. So, it there's the distortion circuit, right? But in that distortion circuit, it also shapes the tone. So we've got the power EQ to shape the tone a bit. So we're getting a bit of that hard clipping character from the Ross distortion and the power EQ to shape a bit of that, that uh, tone. So the most 
commonly known thing about the Klon is that lovely 1K mid lift, and that's where that is happening. Okay, so we're using the parity EQ for that, and we'll tweak that as we go. So exactly. we've got line one, line one through the 10 band EQ, line yep. two through the G7. Yep. Line three is the distortion circuit. Exactly. Now the G7 and the distortion circuit come into this little summing box here. Yep. And then the output of this goes to the B side of the mixer. So right. that is the clean side and that is the B side. Now, the reason that we've done it like this, one of the really clever things about the Klon is that the gain pot is on what we call a dual gain pot. So I'll show you a picture of it. It's basically two pots in one. Mm. And it looks like two pots making baby pots. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, yes, uh, electronics only fans. So <laughs> you've got, as you turn the gain control, it is turning the wiper on two separate pots. One wiper is controlling the gain on the distortion. The other wiper is mixing between the distortion circuit and the clean circuit. Yeah. As you turn the gain down, you're engaging more of the clean circuit, and as you turn the gain up, you are taking the clean circuit out of it. It's very clever. It's so clever. Yeah. I've I have a hypothesis that they have. It's kind of like if you think about what happens in a uh, in a soft clipper, how that you've got um, the soft clipper. It clips certain frequencies and lets other ones through. Well, it's kind of like that. You've got uh, okay. two signal paths going around the hard clipping yeah, yeah, circuit. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of like they've deconstructed yeah. uh, like a tube screamer and made it very, very clever. And it's a nice story, isn't it? Because when you say the, the Klon is a hard um, clipped germanium with, di with germanium diodes, hard clipper with germanium diodes, you know, things like rats come to mind and, yeah. and like edgy distortion pedals. Yeah. And the Klon doesn't really... That's not how it sits in most people's yeah, minds. Yeah, because so. it's all got to do with that. Yeah, the mix. The, the, the mix and that gain control. So cool. That's yeah. Basically, that's what it's doing. As you turn the gain up, you're dialing out the clean, um, the clean channel, and then as you turn it down, you're dialing in the clean channel. So what I need to do that was noticeable in the uh, sound examples you've heard earlier because the gain sound is quite a bit quieter than the clean sound. Right. So it's definitely turning it down somewhere in there. And that's not just that it's clipping it harder, it was noticeably quieter right, sure. to really turn well, it up. So it's very interesting, right? Because as you normally, what that gain control is doing is allowing a uh, signal into the distortion part. And the clone is doing that to a degree, but as it mixes in the clean circuit, you get this balance between, you know, uh, clean, and as you turn it up, you don't, like on a normal overdrive, when you turn the gain up, the thing just gets louder and louder and louder and louder, whereas the Klon doesn't do that. Yeah, not yeah. to the same degree. Yeah. Okay, so then that all feeds into the wetter box. Yep. So we've got distortion circuit on one side, clean circuit on the other. Yes. And we can mix them. Uh, what's the DCX boost for? So after it gets mixed in the Klon, it then goes into the tone circuit. So the tone circuit in the Klon is an active tone circuit. Right, there's like um, up to 500 hertz or around there, and then as you turn the treble up, it boosts all the frequencies up. Yeah. And as you turn it down, it cuts. So it's not like a passive tone control where you just you're just cutting. Yeah. It's an active tone control where it actively boosts frequencies and then actively cuts them. Let's have a listen to that. Just play the SG for a sec. So normally... Real treble in there. Yeah, yeah. Real treble. Normally, uh, well, often in a circuit, they will build all the top end frequencies into the overdrive and then the tone control just cuts them. Yeah. Whereas the overdrive is pretty neutral and that's boosting or, or cutting those, yeah, those yeah. treble frequencies. So that's what the DCX boost, it's in EQ mode and then we're just using that 
that active tank control to boost or to cut those the highs. Yeah, the, it's the not highs. exactly the same thing, and it, it's likely that the uh, EQ centers aren't the same. It's just proof of concept yeah. rather than exact copy. Okay? Exactly. And yeah. then out of that, we go into this little passive volume control. So at the end of the Klon circuit, you've got this uh, 10K pot, and that's your master volume. And that's what that's doing. That's what that's doing. OK, all right. Um, let's get on with it then. So the first sound we had was this, which is kind of where I have my Klon there or thereabouts, which is gain at 9 o'clock. Most people I know use Klons with gain at 9 or 10 o'clock. OK. Uh, and which really annoys all the people that want to use them here on as heavy overdrives, but you know, it's all good. Sure. Um, so the other thing I, that I forgot to mention is that not only, as we mix between the two circuits, as we mix between the, the clean and the overdrive, as we as we mix the, um, the clean in, I need to turn the gain down. And as I mix the gain in, I need to turn the gain up. On the overdrive, on yeah. the distortion. So it's not just going here to here, yeah. it's, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Yeah. All right. Uh, so let's. I will get a sound on the clone that's um, acceptably okay, and go from there. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Start on the neck pickup, and okay. then we'll jump around a bit and see see what we've got. Okay, so we've got a lot of clean dialed in. The tone is just past noon, and the output is just pre noon. Okay, so let's start. I'm going to turn uh, let's turn this down so that on the B circuit we can hear just what's going on with the G7. That's it. So now, if we have a look, so the gain is, turn the gain down to here, and then we're gonna to start to turn this up. is without the EQ. Given that lovely nose. Yeah. And now let's dial in. We, it's too too distorted. Too distorted. Yeah. Because we haven't got the clean. We haven't got yet. the clean in. Right. Right. So yeah, it might be. It might looking at this. Let's just get that there. Just play again for us. So immediately we've got, uh, it's much duller sounding. Mm -hmm. It's nowhere near as loud, so we need more volume. Okay. And probably even less distortion. More highs. That is the clean. So that's all, that's, now we'll hear just this. This is your clean sound. Yeah, so we need a bit more of this. A bit more of that. Thank you. 
on the Nauticlon. Yep. The not a Nauticlon. It's it doesn't have the attack. It's missing some uh, front end punch, and it's woolly. Okay. In a way that the so what's the difference between changing this and changing this? this because is pre, this is, this is yeah. Post. So this is yeah. This is really important. If we have a listen to the the clean sound of the clone. bottom end in the in the not a not a clone but much closer okay okay so now it's about getting the now it's about yeah getting that overdrive circuit yeah so if, you, if you've turned off don't worry we'll get there in a minute yeah yeah let's we'll heavily edit so why don't actually what well, makes sense now now that we've got the clean sound yeah let's do the gain sound no i want to get there i want to get there okay so so now that we've got this yep we need to get this right. Yeah, what I'm saying is if we turn the gain all the way up, it takes the clean out and then we can hear, just hear the overdrive circuit. And then we can mix them. Okay. Because at the moment, because what's tricky, and it is really tricky because we're hearing yeah. two competing circuits. But at least we know now. Yeah. At least we know. So now that now that we're there, we uh, what I would say we can do is start with the... There's a big mid-range hole in that. Yep. Um, so, uh, yeah, we want to be pushing. Yeah, it's tough because you've got a bunch of decisions to make here. cut I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah right. As you said, because there's not much of the distortion circuit in there, yeah. it's really hard to Exactly that. It's really hard to hear it. Okay. Um, you play for a sec. Okay. Closer. Yeah, well done. So, Closer. 
It's it's combining the elements of that clean because there's so much clean signal in there, but yeah. you've got to get that that uh, it's just engaging. Yeah. The overdrive circuit. Should we move on to the mid gain sound? Move then? on to the mid gain sound. So here we're going to hear more of the overdrive circuit, but you'll still hear the attack. Yeah. Okay. I might. I'm just going to change to some humbuckers a sec. Okay. Um, to do this. I'm going to choose this guitar deliberately because it does have quite a nice high end. So good, <laughs> it's great. But you can hear as I turn the gain. Yeah, you can you can hear the gain kicking in, mm. but it still has the attack, and that's what this clean circuit around the outside does. So we should, at this point, be able to simply turn the distortion up in the ROS, the level down a bit, and affect the mix difference. Exactly. Should you should? Let's see. Okay. <laughs> Pretty good. Pretty That's close. Pretty good. Pretty, pretty close. We haven't changed the DCX boost at all. So because we haven't changed the treble. Yeah. And the DC if we if we turn the treble up. Yeah. So what I'll do, let's do the same sound, we'll turn the treble up, and then you'll see the DCX boost matches that treble. Okay. Because it's post game right. stage. I'll stay on the neck pickup because more treble on the bridge pickup at this point would be uh gilding the lily somewhat. Okay. Feels like it's at a higher frequency in the DCX boost. Right. The center point of that. Okay. High. It feels a little a bit, bit higher, higher to me. Sure. Great though. Yeah. That's again. You get the idea because yeah. it's an active thing. It's taking and the EQ is post gain stage. Just takes the sound and, and adds sizzle. So when we were on the clean sound, where was the mix on the wetter box? It was sort of at two, three o'clock, wasn't it? Uh, the first. Yeah. That we were just just in. Yeah. Basically and then. The gain stage. And the mid gain sound, we're back to here. Back to 50. Okay then, boyo, let's uh, let's go to town. 
You're in the chair, I'll do the twiddling. Okay, I might change my Git board as well. Um, All the SG people going? Oh, no, no, okay, no, no, we'll leave the SG on. If, we, if we're going to, if we're going to bring the rock, let's, let's bring the, let's, uh, yeah, leave it. Played, sir. Well near played. enough. Near enough. Yeah. Near enough. The challenge. Uh, one of the challenges are that you get into, so that the nose on the distortion gets very particular. Yes. So one As thing I did was I changed the cue on the mid frequency there to the tightest version and oh, get, nice. gave it a push at where I think I could feel the um, the mid nose. And then of course it's just getting the bottom end response and the high end response. Bearing in mind that the Trying to find those specific frequencies in the power EQ. Yeah, yeah. You just got to do it quick. Yeah. Um, but not a million miles away, I wouldn't no, say. No, no. It's so. But so, what's really impressive is that when you hear the difference between that sound, right? Let's. I'm going to take away now all of the outside clean. I'm going to take away. So the we, G7, and I just, I'm going to take away the power EQ, and we're just going to hear the Ross on tone. Can we leave, is it possible to leave the power EQ yeah, in yeah, for a totally. second? So yeah, here's yeah. for all those people that go, oh, well, you can just make the sound of a clom with a distortion pedal and an EQ. Let's see if that's true. Okay. So I'm going to yep. get rid of the, the outside. Can we, you tell me what to do, and I'll do it as you play. Oh, okay. So I leave that on. Yeah. Turn, turn the volume. The right hand side. Actually, yeah, down. That's it. That's off. I just want to do it while you play. Okay. So you're going to turn that down. Yeah. You're going to put it completely on B, yeah. the weather box. And then you're going to turn the DCX boost off. Okay. Okay. We're leaving the 10 band EQ on because that's out of the circuit. If you're on B, it's completely out of yeah. the circuit. Okay, great. Okay. Okay. So, so uh, here we go then. That awesome proved it both ways. Uh, hopefully, the uh, the masking on screen and the words on screen will explain exactly what was happening there. And the diagrams throughout today's show will have made it much clearer than perhaps just listening to Dan and I 
bang on about it. Yeah. Well, there you go. So if you want to construct your own con, <laughs> you could either buy one of Josh's kits for $99, $99 or spend about a grand on this. Exactly. Yeah, at least a grand. We know what that pedal show would do. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, well done, mate. That was excellent. Uh, yeah. That oh, was thank you. Really, really excellent. And hopefully it just unpacks a little bit in the same way that Dan did before with the reverbs and with the multi-head delay. It just unpacks a little bit of what's going on inside these pedals to mm. give you an idea of, of the, the really clever design yeah. and some of the reasons why we, why we love them so much. Yeah. Uh, it's worth saying none of this stuff that's going on inside the clone is by accident. No. It took them four years to design this. Mm. Um, and they were they were fastidious about resistor values and capacitor values, and you know they would spend so much time just making sure it felt right. And that's the thing with the Klon, the, the the genius of that the mixing circuit is that you might not always hear, like even if you've got only got a little bit of it in, you might yeah. not always hear that clean sound, but boy, you can feel it. Yeah, hence the. The low pass. Yeah, yeah. That's really, really, really super interesting. And by singling out the Klon, we don't mean to further put the Klon on a pedestal and go, well, it's amazing and you should go and spend five grand on one. That's idiotic. That's for collectors only these days. Yeah, just spend a grand on this. It's <laughs> so much easier. But I guess pushing that out to other classic overdrive pedal designs down the years mm. and other great pedals down the years, what goes into them is amazing, like Dan said. And we just used the Klon today on the back of Josh's amazing marketing campaign. And so I think draw a line under our clone videos. Yeah. I don't want to make any more clone videos. Okay. I don't want to say, does this sound better than that? I don't want to say, is this, does this really sound like it now? Yeah. I I like it. I, I'm done. Yeah. Are okay. You done? I'm, I'm done. Let's, let's be done with clone. Yeah. It doesn't mean it won't appear on the show again, but I think we've run out of questions about the clone. Yeah. But that's a nice way to finish, I think. I think it was very fitting. Yeah. Yeah. Very I can imagine good. Bill Finnegan watching, lighting up a cigar. Saying a glass yeah. of Laphroaig. Yep, yeah, I've, I've arrived. Yeah, in his uh, smoking jacket next to his roaring fire. And a massive velvet chair, really high back. Yeah. Yeah, lovely. Mansion made out of gold bricks. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's renting it off us. <laughs> lovely. <laughs> With his dogs, <laughs> Centaur and Clon. <laughs> Heel Centaur. <laughs> and uh, his cat, KTR, obviously. Uh, let's stop this now. <laughs> thanks for watching yeah thanks everyone uh, again please subscribe if you haven't subscribed massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon uh, thank you so much for your support and of course to anyone that's gone to thatpedalshowstore.com and merged ye up says it here look yeah that's all that matters I've had I've had my Christmas shirt on because I'm getting in the festive mood obviously um, I didn't think about this who knows when it'll who, out. exactly yeah, yeah, but yeah. I didn't oh, you know there's no fourth on this but to me you know, deconstructing a clone means it's Christmas all year round, Michael. <laughs> Maybe there'll be one under your tree this year. Yeah, or not. Good. Yeah. Yes. Uh, thank you, Tapper Fair Retailers. All the information in the description below. But uh, till next time, have a great day and we'll see you soon. Bye. Cheers, guys. Bye.